Psalm chapter 119, verse 129. And if your Bible is so marked with these weird characters and words or letters, your Bible has Psalms 119 is broken down by the Hebrew alphabet. What you're looking at is the letters like a, B, C, D, E, F, G. And Psalms 119, 129, we're at P. The P, E is kind of pronounced as P. Thy God testimony. What God has done. Everything that God has done for his people, for the world, are wonderful. And they're wonderful is, wow. And for the writer to be an Israelite, to look back at what God's done for the children of Israel, wow. You love them. Man, God, we're, we're the only people. Man, you've done nothing like this for anybody else. And they're a wonder to say, how on earth? When, in the book of Exodus, it's easy to explain how there was a plague or a judgment or event upon the Egyptians only. But there was no judgment or plague of the same upon the Israelites. How on earth in Egypt was there darkness that could be felt and Israel have light? How did you do that? How on earth did the plague of Maimon, or Mayon, however you want to say it, anthrax, how did it know that it was Egyptian cattle and not to touch the Jewish cattle? How did the destroyer know, all right, yes, God, go into that house and don't have the blood. Okay, no problem. How did the destroyer know Okay, not that one. No, nope, not that one. No, nope, that one. That's the firstborn. And you got to, wow. It's a wonder how much God cares for you. And it's a wonder, like, it's called a miracle. Therefore, and, and, and the reason thereof does my soul keep them, the testimony, and the wonder. And does the psalmist is a husband or a father? I'm going to teach him on my family and my children. And that's what Passover was. To remind you of the Passover night coming out of Egypt. That lamb was to be slain to show you the picture of, of the lamb of God which take away the sin in the world. The Feast of Tabernacles was to show you. The, the Day of Atonement was to show you. The entrance of thy word giveth light. Now back to Psalms 119, verse 105. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. The when the word comes in, and, and the illustration is you're, you're walking into a dark room, boom, here's light. It giveth understanding, relationship to God, unto the simple. And simple as somebody else, they don't have a scholarly de degree. And the Bible says about the simple, they believe everything or anything. It's so simple, a simpleton can, can understand. You have to be educated out of the Bible. I open my mouth and pant, thirst. That's the first time panted shows up in the Bible. It's a thirst. I have a thirst for your word. For I long, I want, I desire, I'm longing for. Verse 123. My eyes fail for thy salvation and for the word of thy righteousness. I'm longing, I'm thirsting, I'm panting for the commandments, which is also the word of God. And that pant is only else in the Bible, Isaiah 21, verse 4. 
So he has a desire for God's word. I wish Christians had that desire today. Because they wouldn't be doing the nonsense they're doing. Look thou, God, upon me. And be merciful. And, and always, it's been right in Psalm 1, show me mercy, show me mercy. We are allowed to say, God, I need mercy. Scripture. As thou usest to do to those that love thy name. God, I look in the Word and I see, you know what? You showed him mercy. You know what? I know my neighbor. He loves you. You show him mercy. You're a merciful God. You helped him. You helped her. You helped him. You helped her. You helped her. You helped him. You helped her. You helped her. God, can it be my turn? What are you saying? Order my steps in thy word. It's a guidance. Say, God, where you were, tell me where to go. You want me to go straight? You want me to go to this city? You want me to go to that town? You want me to do this? You want me to do that? Order. Like you go in a place and you order something to eat. And you expect, I went for a grinder the other day and I told the guy I wanted a whale. And he didn't listen. He put pan in that's not the proper order. And when, when God says, okay, I want you to make me a grinder. I want this kind of bread. I want this kind of meat. I want this kind of cheese. I want lettuce. I want tomato. Uh, don't put that on there. Nope, I don't want that. I want salt and pepper. Okay. I want extra oil. No, don't put mayonnaise on it. That's not what I asked for. I said oil, and I said extra oil. God says, hey, why don't you go in all the world and preach the gospel? No, I didn't say, I didn't, no. I, I didn't say movie night. I didn't say fellowship. I didn't say come to church. I said preach the gospel. No, I didn't say let your light shine. I, I didn't order that. I said, study to show thyself. A no, I didn't say go to the bookstore and buy a book about Psalms. I didn't tell you to go and buy the book of Jabez. I didn't tell you to get a book about prayers. I said, study the word. I'm the meeting between God and... No, I, I didn't say my mother. No, I didn't say see who and who. No, I did not say go in the closet and tell that man. I told you to pray to me. You see, there are people out there in the form of religion, and they're not doing what God ordered them to do. They're doing something else. And it, when you come to the checkout, and that grinder is not what you wanted, you have a right to say, take it back and make it right. He says, order my steps. In thy word, what you walk and what you do and where you go and what you talk better be in line with the word. And let not any iniquity have dominion over me. I don't want sin to be a, to be a king in my life. I don't want iniquity to be my rule. I'm going to sin for all have sinned. Listen, you better settle in your heart. You're a Christian. You're going to sin till you die. You're not going to get rid of sin. 1 John 1, 9. Deliver me. You order, verse 133, and then you get a delivery. Who would have ever thought? Deliver me. I wonder how many people in restaurants and, and, and work in pizza and know the order and the deliver of Psalms 119, 133, 134. I wonder. 
Deliver me from the oppression of man. You're going to be, this guy is a man of God. This guy is a servant of God. This guy loves the word. And Jesus said, know that the world hated me first. John says, marvel not my brother if, you, if the world hates you. But doesn't this television evangelist say, everything's going to be hunky-dory and everything's going to be guys full of crap. Here's a man that loves the word, loves the Lord. He says, God, I got a pressure. Paul said to a church, have I become your enemy? Because you, you, I told you the truth. I've got enemies in churches and Christians because I've told them the truth. I have been unfriended by Facebook, by family and Christians because I told the truth. It came out of the Bible. It has to be the truth. So will I keep thy precepts, the word, the word, the word, the word, the word, the word, the word. The writer of the Psalms 119 cannot get enough of the word. Make thy faith, God's faith, to shine upon thy servant. God told Moses, whosoever looked upon my face shall not live. He wants that glow of God, the light of God. And that's Jesus Christ. And teach me, God, you teach me thy statutes. The word, the word, the word, the word. Rivers of water run down my eyes. He's crying. And it's not depression. Because, this is why I'm crying all much, much dear. They keep not thy law. God, I'm looking at these people. I'm, I'm looking at these Jewish people. The ones who are supposed to keep the law. God, I look at these Christians who are supposed to be doing right. And my heart just aches. Because they're not doing right. And for the Christian, I, I look at them and I, I, I'm here to help you. And what you think you're doing is going to be ashes at the judgment seat of Christ. And, and you're too proud and too pride to see it and you won't do it. Discouragement in the law at the temple and the discouragement of the Bible of at church. Not everybody doing what God told them to do. Zedi. Zedi. Righteousness, or righteous, excuse me, righteous art. There you go. There's a word for and this place is only gonna be righteous art, no nudity. Righteous art. And they'll say pornography is art. It's not righteous art. Righteous art, thou okay. Out thou, O Lord, God is righteous. Always doing right. Never doing wrong. Holy. And upright in thy judgment. Whenever God judges coronavirus or sends a man off to hell. Or chas chastens a child of God. Or is going to give a child of God wood, hay, or stubble. Or give a child of God gold, silver, precious stones. Or give a child God a crown. Or give a child God no crown. Give a child God no inheritance. Or give a child God inheritance. Or tell someone, depart from me, you work with iniquity. Or tell another, well done. God is upright and he's righteous in what he does. By testimonies again, it started off in 129. What God does, that thou has commanded, are righteous and very faithful. Well, 
What about the Egyptians, the, 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 the firstborn that died in all the houses? Did God not tell you to slay a lamb and put the blood on the doorpost? What's the trouble? Well, how dare God send somebody to hell? You mean when somebody like me and they go to buy produce at the farmer's market and someone like me is screaming out, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Uh, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Your church, your membership, your baptism, your religion, your works can't save your soul. Only Jesus saved. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me. For all have sinned, come short of the glory of God. There's no right, there's none righteous, no, not one. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God's eternal life to Jesus Christ our Lord. With the heart man believes unto righteousness, with the mouth confesses man unto salvation. Come now, let us reason again, though your sins be a start. They should be, I mean, you mean after they heard that? And they don't listen and they don't believe. You better believe God's right. My zeal has consumed me because of my enemy have forgotten thy word. They don't keep the law and they've forgotten the word. And I'm on fire for you, Lord, but People not doing right is putting the flames out. And listen, public ministry, and I've had family, and I had friends, and I had Christians. They've forsaken me. And not hard shell Baptist, but I'm hard shell. I'm, I've got convictions that other Christians don't have, and I get rebuked for those Christians, and I get the Bible thrown at me because, you know, how to validate what we say you are saying is wrong. And what you are saying is wrong. I don't see Peter, James, and John and Jesus doing what you're doing. And when you see people do that, you see people act like that, it breaks your heart. I remember one time, my wife, Lisa, and I, we were, in, uh, we were in a city that we're not usually, but it was close to our old home church was, and we end up leaving. We were in a grocery store, and we saw the, a church family there. As we're coming around the, the, the corner into the aisle, and we're looking at, we're, we're getting things, we're putting the carriage, and next, you know, we look up, there's the carriage with stuff in it, and they're gone. Maybe they. No, they saw us coming, and they left the grocery store. Christian. And come to find out later on, they were part of Christians that were bad mouthing me and Lisa. That hurt. Because that's not right. That's not correct. That's not according to the Word of God. You know, you're not supposed to come up to a Christian who's got bumper stickers on his car, who's trying to witness for Jesus when they're not in the car, and people look at the bumper stickers and they read the bumper stickers. You're not to be the pastor of the church and say, give me your keys, I'm moving your car, because we've got guests coming to our church today. And take my keys and move the car out of a handicapped parking spot, which we've got, which we had a handicapped uh, card for, legally. That church is not doing right. That church, King James, corrects the King James. And that pastor is going to find himself wood, hay, and stubble. But he wouldn't listen. I, I don't talk to pastors no more. I'm tired of talking to them. Because all I do is I get, their, I get their little lecture behind the desk and how well they are and how great they are and touch not my anointed and do my prophets no Fine. Fine. You stand before God. I'm not. 
And the very fact is that what I have done, what I believe in my conviction has angered you because you're going against what I believe. You got the trouble because you're the one upset. I'm not. Thy word, 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 is very pure, genuine, real, unmixed, pure, untouched by human hand, untouched by animal. You know what's pure of snow? Out in the meadow where there's been no animals and no man. You know where snow becomes unpure? When you get the snow plows out. When you get the dog that walks through it. Or you get the squirrel that, that tramples through it. Then it becomes unpure. Therefore thy servant, there he goes again, I'm the servant of God. Order me, he said. Order my step. You tell me what to do because I'm your servant. But it's not Revelation chapter 3, the lad to see in church age. Therefore thy servant loveth it, the pure word of the Lord. He loves the word of God. I am small and despised. I'm rejected by people and I'm nobody. Yet do not I forget thy Precepts, the word, the word, the word, the word. I'm still memorizing scripture. I'm still studying the scripture. I don't care what they think. I don't care all my my employ all my uh, co-workers are making fun of me because I'm in the I'm in a cafeteria and having a sandwich and with a Bible. I don't care. I don't care they're making fun of me. My employer allows me to have the the, the, the scripture sign on my my workplace. I'm allowed to have it. I I I don't care what they laugh at me. I don't care. I'm allowed to have that and they go stick a nudity picture in my desk just to try it. I don't care. I'll just throw it in the garbage and pick up the word. I've had all that done to me. Thy righteousness, God, is an everlasting righteousness forever without time. And thy law, the word, the word, the word, the word, is the truth and jesus said i am the way the truth that's jesus you want the truth it's the word paul said have have i become your enemy because i told you the truth what did paul tell him? i told you what the word of god said and what happened christians got upset at paul i tell christian this is what the bible says well some man taught me well some man taught you were wrong this is what the Bible, and, and, and I'm mad at you. Get away from me. I don't want anything to do with you. Okay. I've got two people right now. They love the Lord. They want to do right, and they're growing. I got another person I talked to last night. They got troubles and problems. I quoted the scriptures to them, and I was, you could say I was cruel. And she's like, That's, I needed that. Now, someone who didn't love the Lord, how dare you say that? I'll take those Christians any day. The Christians that get offended and the Christians that go away. Trouble. Oh, that's, that's, a, that's a troubling word. You know, the day I got saved, I never thought there would be trouble. And I take that back. The moment I got saved, I knelt down and I received Jesus Christ. April 25th, I get a problem with the date. April 25th, 1987, I received the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior. My name was written down in, in, in the Lamb's Book of Life. The angels rejoiced in heaven, Luke chapter 15. My grandma, you got your fingerprints on my coffee table. I got trouble from a Christian from the day I got up from getting saved. And I've had trouble ever since. Thank God I have not had the trouble that Paul had. But if you think Christian is great life, you need to take and study what Paul. And in all the epistles of Paul, 
when he writes, this happened to me, prison, bunk, write all that down in a list and find out all Paul that went through. You know, Paul was stoned one time and I'm not talking drugs. Paul had ailments, Paul had problems, Paul had trouble. And anguish have taken hold on me. Oh, I've got the anguish. You ought not to do that. You ought not. Well. Yeah. Thy God commandments. The word, the word, the word, the word are my delight. Troubles and anguish? What am I going to do? I'm going to get in the word. The righteousness. God is righteous of thy testimonies. Look what he said about the testimonies. They're wonderful. They're great. They're righteous. They're faithful. You know what? Some of the testimonies of God, people died. Do you know that? I'll give you one circumstance. Eight people got inside the ark. The God closed the door and everybody outside drowned and died. What's the writer say? Thy testimonies are righteous. Thy testimonies are faithful. Thy testimonies are wonderful. The entire world outside of eight people died. And God was correct. And how was God correct? The Bible tells, I think it's James or is it Peter? And Noah preached righteousness. God says, I want you to build that ark. Okay. <clears throat> Besides building that ark, Noah, yeah, I want you to tell them. No problem. And he's out there sawing wood with his son. Got, what you doing, Noah? Now I'm building this ark. God said there's going to be rain. You better get him board. And maybe lunchtime, he'll bite his sandwich and get probably get up on the on the ark or get up on a, on a scaffold and say, God says it's going to rain, and this boat, this ark, is the only way to get in. And no one listened. And the whole world died. And all the way over in the New Testament, either James or Peter, what's the righteousness of God? And Noah preached. God warned them through Noah. Thy righteousness, the righteousness of thy testimony is everlasting. Give me understanding of God, that how to live, and I shall live. I want to live. How do I live? By God's understanding. Look at verse 116. Upholding me according unto thy words, that I may live. Understanding. 